Hello everyone! In this video we're going to take a look at two substitution reactions, the SN1 and the SN2. And we're going to start by looking at the mechanism of these reactions and then we're going to go to the lab and actually carry out the synthesis and we're going to take a look at the products that come out of these two reactions. The two reactions shown here are going to be the ones that we're going to carry out in our laboratory. The first is the SN2 reaction, in which we're going to replace the bromine in bromooctane with another halogen, either chlorine or iodine. We're going to carry out this reaction in an aqueous setting, and we're going to use this phase transfer catalyst to facilitate the interaction between the inorganic salt and our organic substrate. The second is the SN1 reaction, in which we're going to react 2-methyl-2-butanol with a mixture of halide ions. We're going to spectroscopically determine the dominant product of this reaction to see which of these ions outcompetes in the SN1 reaction. Before we start with the experimental details of the experiment, let's take a look at the mechanism of the SN2 reaction. In this reaction, iodine will be replacing bromine, which is the leaving group on the octane. Because bromine is on a primary carbon in this molecule, it would not form a good carbocation if the bromine was to leave first. So this reaction will take place in a concerted fashion, meaning that the iodine will come and attack this carbon, and the bromine will leave at the same time, generating this transition state structure. Recall that this transition state structure cannot be isolated, so we often put it in brackets. And there's also a negative charge on the structure. Next, the bromine completely comes off, and we get our final product. Recall that the rate of SN2 reactions depends on the concentration of two components, the nucleophile and the substrate. So to get this reaction to go fast in lab, we are going to use saturated solution of potassium iodine to have the highest possible concentration of iodine in solution. Now let's take a look at the mechanism of the SN1 reaction that we're going to be doing in this lab. The rate of this reaction only depends on the concentration of the substrate, which is 2-methyl-2-butanol in our experiment. Note that we're going to carry out this reaction in concentrated sulfuric acid. Let's take a look at why we need the acid in this reaction. On its own, hydroxide is not a good leaving group, so we're going to have to use acid to help it out. When our substrate is in an acidic environment, the hydroxide group will grab a proton from the acid, resulting in the intermediate where the leaving group is now a water molecule. The water molecule is now a much better leaving group than a hydroxide ion. So the water molecule will take the electrons from the bond and leave resulting in a carbocation intermediate. The carbocation is a real intermediate. It can be isolated and studied spectroscopically. And in the last step, the halide finally adds to the carbocation, giving us our final product. Before we start doing chemistry, we're going to briefly familiarize ourselves with the procedure. Whenever you're doing any kind of experiments, it is extremely important for you to write all of the information down into your notebook. So let's take a look at how we keep our notebooks when we're doing organic synthesis. In our notebook, the first thing we'll write down is today's date. And the title of the reaction that we're going to be doing. Now we need to write out the reaction scheme. We'll start by drawing our substrate. Then we're going to draw an arrow. Above the arrow, we're going to write out our reagents. And in this one, we're going to use potassium iodide. Beneath the arrow, we're going to write down any solvents and reaction conditions. Then on the right side, we're going to write out the product. And now we have to make a table for all of the compounds that are involved in this reaction. To begin our table, we have to list all of our compounds. When we're dealing with large and complex molecules, we'll just give them a number to refer to them in our table. So bromooctane will be a 1. Potassium iodide is pretty easy to write, so we'll just leave it as is. The phase transfer catalyst will be a 2. And our product will receive the number 4, just so that we could be consistent with the procedure. Now we're going to construct the table of all of our contents. And the first column in our table is going to consist of theoretical quantities. So we're going to write in the millimole amounts of each of these compounds that we're going to be working with. And make sure that you use the correct amount of significant figures. In the next column, we're going to convert the millimole amounts into actual quantities that we can measure out. This translates to 1.93 grams of bromooctane roughly 0.18 grams of the phase transfer catalyst, 15.7 mils of the saturated potassium iodide solution, and this should give us 2.40 grams of our product. 
In the next column, we're going to write the actual quantities that we put into our reaction in the laboratory. Below this table, we're going to write out the procedure for this reaction. On another page in our notebook, we would do the same thing for our SN1 reaction. All right, now that we have all of our reactions planned out in our notebook, let's head to lab and start our synthesis.
All right, this concludes the synthesis and the purification work for this week. And next week, we're going to characterize the products that we made in these reactions using gas chromatography and proton NMR spectroscopy.